K47 here, and I wanted to share with you guys my summertime training tools, or as I like to call it, my off-season quiver. So I've broken this video up into indoor and outdoor training tools because sometimes the weather just doesn't cooperate for you. Let's start with the outside stuff since I hope I'm not one of the last generations who still enjoys being outdoors. I'm also going to start with the longboard since this has pretty much become my go-to for any kind of macadam riding. I picked this up off Facebook Marketplace for 30 bucks, and as you guys can see, the bearings are freaking solid. I was really impressed with it, considering how cheap it was. I don't know too much about the Gravity brand. I do know that the board is a little flimsier than I would like. I was hoping for an Arbor initially, however, they were more expensive and I couldn't turn down a really good deal. I just so happened to live in a college town that was letting out and the kid wanted beer money for the summer, so couldn't say no. This also has replaced my bicycle as far as just commuting around town. I did buy this mostly for making turns going downhill, which was why I knew I wanted to drop through truck style. They do make trucks for longboards out there that have a double articulating point. Instead of just moving a little bit, they're actually like four wheel steering on a really fancy car or large truck. I saw no point in updating my board because I spent so little for it and those trucks are very expensive. However, it is something that if you're really into trying to get the carving sensation off of a longboard in the off season, you might want to look into it. You can't do very many tricks on this, so obviously a skateboard still has its place, but this has definitely become my go-to fun cruiser just to get around town and practicing my uh, switch stance. Because you're not in a binding, it makes it real easy to dial in your feet and figure out that exact angle which you're most comfortable with. And I think that's gonna help come winter time again when they go to clip back in. So a lot of you guys were expecting a skateboard next and wondering what this has to do with board sports. But even though there's not heel side, toe side, there's still balance and a lot of cardio involved. Something I suspect a lot of you guys don't get enough of in the off season. And the main reason why I have this as number two is to screw with you a little bit and keep you on your game. Just like it helps me keep my head in the game. I'm able to look at a wooded lot and pick out the most open line in a crowded area, whether it be trees or suburban area with other types of features. And I was not born with that capability. I used to have to follow my friends all the time. But in the past year or two of blazing my own trails, and riding in the off season on this, it has opened up that capability for me. And I hope that you guys can get that same ability with a little bit of riding. I picked this up from Kmart many moons ago for a hundred bucks. I wanna say they go for a lot more than that now. Therefore, I would probably avoid something along those lines. You could either go the high end route and spend a whole bunch of money and get a mountain bike or you could go the cheap end route and look on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace for something, which is probably what I would tend to do. Although if you have the discretionary funds, go right ahead and get yourself something a little nicer. It's all important that you get out there and make some turns just to keep your head in the game. This is my freeboard. It does handle more like a snowboard than a skateboard or a longboard does in the aspect that it forces you to pick an edge. The way that it does that here, you guys might be able to see is these center wheels actually spin so no matter what direction you're going down the hill it forces you to pick an edge and those wheels drag however in my opinion they do drag too much as you can see here that they do lock in the front or rear positions to keep it from being so squirrely underneath your feet when you're trying to straight line it down a large hill etc However, I did not feel that it helped a whole lot. I did pick a board that was larger than what the size chart on the manufacturer's website told me to. When I went to their website, they said I should be on an 83. Instead, I went with an 85 since I normally like to ride a larger snowboard. I just assumed it would be close to the same feeling. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> the center wheel here is so much lower even though it's adjustable on the lowest setting it rubs against the board so it's not rideable and as is in the middle setting which is the lowest setting you can put it on while it's still the wheel spin is so far above the side wheels here that it's not the precise little minute actions you get on a snowboard 
you really have to throw your weight around and do a lot of shifty action to get this thing to move. The learning curve was larger than I expected. It is great when I'm up for a challenge, however, when any of my friends want to go bombing hills or just hit the park, I'm going to grab my longboard or my skateboard in that order. So this thing is pretty sweet, however, I do feel the price point of $200 was high for me only taking it out maybe five times in my off season. I recommend if you have a friend with one, you really try it first or score one cheap off Craigslist slash Facebook Marketplace before you go dropping the loot. Don't get me wrong, it's a really cool idea and very innovative. However, I do think it needs some more fine tuning before the sport will ever actually fully take on. So, the skateboard. Here's the one you've been waiting for. You knew it was coming. Um, I know I'm dating myself here, but I grew up riding a single lip skateboard, or what would be considered a cruiser style by today's standards. And they're a hell of a lot of fun, but I realistically feel as if the longboard's kind of replaced all that, especially since I'm trying to get that feeling of being on a snowboard on wheels, and the longboard's just where it's at for that, and it's definitely my go-to. Don't get me wrong, I still love this thing as far as tricks or anything like that. Obviously, since they've added the front lip onto it for getting air and doing stalls, etc., it's a necessity, <clears throat> and it's really revolutionized the sport. I think it's great. Um, this thing set me back 60 bucks from Zazzle. Some of you old heads might actually catch on to the Adventure Island reference here with the uh, skateboard upgrade. If not, then you should go check it out because it's a lot of fun. No, $60 for the deck only. The uh, wheels and trucks were all separate. But I think that this is extremely fun in a park or anywhere where you want to practice your tricks. As far as actually going down hills, like I said, the longboard is my personal favorite. But this will always have a special place in my heart since I grew up riding a skateboard. The wakeboard. This thing has quickly became my go-to training tool for out on the water and is by far my favorite addition to my off-season quiver. That progressive edge as you're coming into the wake is so addicting. It's just as addictive as carving down the mountain. It feeds my crave in the off-season. It's great. Speaking of mountains, you guys might notice these do not look like traditional wakeboard bindings, but more like snowboard bindings. For those of you who don't know, this is a traditional wakeboard binding where the boots permanently affixed to the disc and then screwed into the board. It takes me about five to 10 minutes to lace those up, whereas I can clip into here in about two minutes. That's me already having my boots on as I got on the boat. So it saves considerably more time when I'm actually out on the water. I can play more instead of lacing up and everybody watching me, I don't feel like a gigantic dingus. It's great. Special shout out to Hyperlite for coming up with these System Pro bindings. They've adapted a lot of the snowboard binding technologies and put it into the wakeboard binding. They are considerably lighter than a snowboard binding, but they still hold up tough. I've taken a couple headers on them. I'm really impressed. The rigid pad here allows for water drainage and for a flat sole boot, which they've redesigned in 2015. And the combination of all that together makes it handle a lot more like a snowboard. It's very impressive. The research and development team there is ahead of the industry. I'm very impressed with Hyperlite. The other thing that I did to this board to make it handle more like a snowboard is I put a P-wing fin on here in the middle. They originally came with the A-wing fins, which is to are a little deeper and track in the water more. This allows me to bust loose for butter tricks and other stuff, and it makes it a little, little more slippery on the water. You can take the fins out completely, but I tried that and it was a little too much for me. Maybe as I get better, I will decide to do that one day. As of now, this is my favorite setup. Speaking of setups, most of these have been balling on a budget, and I've kept them under $100, and not this one. I have about $350 into this, give or take a couple bucks. The bindings, the boots, and the board, plus the fins, eh. It all adds up quick, but I don't regret spending a dime of it due to the fact that it is so much like snowboarding and it is so much fun. I really feel that this is a go-to sport for your off-season training. If you guys live anywhere near a cable park or have a friend with a boat, I highly recommend you give it a shot. You will not regret it. I hope you all have better luck on Craigslist or Facebook than I did, and that might save you a couple bucks compared to what I had to spend. 
this is my early 90s wakeboard, or as you can see, I like to call it a wake surf because it handles more like a wake surf or surfboard. It pretty much is one little surfboard that's designed to be pulled behind a boat. It does not have that edge feeling like when you're carving on a snowboard or the wakeboard has, for which uh, my wakeboard is my go-to for water sports. However, I found this in at Goodwill for $1.50. You can't freaking beat it. <clears throat> it's a hell of a lot of fun. It's super easy to get up on and handles like a surfboard. Speaking of surfboards, I'm not going to have any of those in this video due to the fact I'm in a landlocked state. Also, you will not see any self-powered training tools, such as a one-wheel, uh, longboard that's self-powered, or anything like that, because, in my opinion, that's no longer a training tool, that is a method of transportation. Now, I know I said no ocean toys. <clears throat> However, the skimboard was something my homie just picked up for $5 off Facebook Marketplace, and you can't beat it. It's a little small for me, I'm kind of heavy. However, we took it down to the islands in the river, and as the boats were going by, we were getting to play around on the shoreline a little bit. So you live near a harbor or on the east coast with waves that are too small to surf, this might be an option for something just to practice your balance on and get out in the sun for a little bit. This is my old school Lamar 163. I picked it up off Craigslist for a whopping 45 bucks with a pair of boots that I resold for $15 to my homie because he wanted something to go shovel snow in. It worked out great, they fit them, and I could then re-put the money back into my trainer board since it was a real snowboard. I had to go out and buy these super lame Jerry bumper covers to protect my furniture, and I'm really glad I did because I thought it would be wise to do rotationary tricks inside, and boy, let me tell you what, I was wrong. The other stuff that I did to make this safer for not only myself, but my furniture and my balance bar or I rounded all the edges off. As you can see, this is super freaking smooth. So I don't have to worry about getting cut or anything. So as you guys see here, for my training setup, since I have hardwood floors, I already have a padded area rug with a nice thick foam mat underneath it, and that's perfect. If you already have wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, you'll be just fine. And this is an absolutely atrociously dry base. But don't worry, it's on purpose. I'm not trying to get wax all over my house or even on my outdoor carpet since I'm a bit of a neat freak. So when I take this thing outside, I still use an outdoor carpet since it's back and forth between the two. I'm not trying to track mud in my house. All in all, I want to say I highly recommend this. And it is a better idea in my mind to go with a real snowboard that's turned into a trainer board because this is less than a pound off of my setup for the park and it's less than three pounds off of my setup for a pal which allows me to practice my endurance strength along with the muscle memory that you would get from the smaller more expensive jib boards or trainer boards out there I would absolutely advise you go out and see if you can't I'm not gonna tell you to dumpster dive but if you're not above it never not look uh, along with ask your local shops if there's a board that they're buried in trash or anything along those lines used junkie boards already that as long as they're within a pound of your initial setup or a few pounds even you're going to get that exercise and you're going to get that muscle memory that you're not going to get off of other options i actually scored this one for cheaper than what it was advertised on Craigslist due to the fact that it has this nasty gouge in it. It definitely took a shot from either another snowboard or some horrible collision. Either way, I have no intentions on doing any kind of fixed job because I'm trying to maintain this on a budget and I'm already getting my full enjoyment out of it. My only gripe with this thing though is I have to say I did get a little bored with it before I got the balance bar. It was kind of repetitive, just ollieing over and over again or doing butter tricks over and over again and having to lace on or lace off your boots. Let's face it, when it's 90 degrees outside, nobody wants to shove their foot into a wool thick sock or even your typical ski or snowboard sock that is thinner so it gets better response time. They're still rather insulated. This is my cheap Under Armour sock that's super thin. I like them a lot. They've actually replaced some of my other socks in my go bag even during the winter season. Because they are so thin, I get really great response time out of them. 
whenever I go to make any kind of turns or do the slightest little movements, there's no movement lost inside of the fabric, as well as their price points considerably cheaper as they come in a balk pack. So this is my Canadian jibber, or the Snowboard Addiction Jib Bar. I absolutely love this thing. I want to say it set me back about $100, and I think they're going for more than that now. Not sure if the United States dollar dropped, or if the Canadian dollar rose, or possibly production prices went up. Or Trump's taxing stuff made from China. I have no freaking clue. All I know is I just looked it up a little earlier, and it was more expensive than I paid for it initially. However, this thing's very useful with a flat surface here. You can treat it like a box, hop up on it, practice your heel side, toe side, rotations on and off for your board slides, etc. And with this little attachment that comes with it, it really increases the height. So after you finally start getting bored, you can work on hopping higher and off of a rounder edge, which simulates rails better. And the best part is this whole thing is made out of a plastic material that can't hurt even your good board. I mostly only use my trainer on here. I did try my real board once and I actually took a nice hunk of plastic out of here. But there is zero damage done to my board and that's the whole reason why I was willing to pay for this thing in the first place. I think it was a solid investment. I highly recommend it because you will get bored with just your trainer set up and only being able to do butters, etc., for so long. So when it's raining cats and dogs and you got nothing else to do, I got a couple inside train tips for you. This is my upper bounce foam board, and to be completely honest, I am actually pleasantly surprised for how well this thing works, considering it's one of the cheaper models out there. It set me back between 60 and 70 bucks. And as you can see, it's one big piece of foam, whereas the nicer models are a hunk of foam and then either fiberglass, plastic, or wood with actual metal inserts to mount your bindings to, which does simulate a snowboard riding scenario better. However, I could buy two of these for one of those, and I don't have to worry about all the insurance and bullcrap due to the fact that I live in a very sue happy state. This board holds up really well from heel to toe side. It does not flex a whole lot, so I was able to teach some of my new friends to the sport the concept of holding an edge. Also, obviously, I bought it for aerial awareness for spins, grabs, and inverts and that I'll probably never be able to do on the mountain because, let's be honest, I'm not that good. But it does give from left to right, which really helps absorb the impact of the trampoline. And I think it makes it a little bit easier on my knees for when I'm doing those real high jumps, practicing double flips and other stuff. I do have this at the beginning of my video for the inside stuff due to the fact that I don't own a trampoline. If you own a trampoline, obviously this would be a little more suited for outdoors. I don't want to deal with the insurance and the upkeep hazards of a trampoline. So I go to my local Sky Zone. Special shout out to them because they allow me and my friends to go there and have a whole bunch of summer fun. I want to say their summer pass is either 40 or 50 bucks from Memorial Day to Labor Day. You really can't beat it as far as off-season training. 60 bucks for this, 40 bucks for the jump for $100. You're good all summer long to practice your aerial awareness. That way the next season when you get on the mountain you can really freaking send it. My only gripe about it is these. I had to go through and add stitching here because as you go to tweak it out and do different grabs, it flexes and the whole thing gets loose and it's a real ankle breaker. I have noticed that on two of the different ones that I've seen. I only have seen two, but I'm assuming it's just in general a defect. Although, in my opinion, it was worth it. This is one of these as seen on TV fit boards. And I think it cost me 20 bucks at Walmart. But you're supposed to do this kind of thing for keep your core in shape. Frankly, I bought it because I was trying to teach my girlfriend some of her edges back and forth. And how do you counter shift yourself to spin? 180s. Yep, I'm not going to get a 360. Nope.
But this is a great one that you don't need a whole lot of space for. And I do it on a carpet, but I'd imagine you could wax the floor and spin around a lot better. So this is a Wally World balance board. Picked up for 22 bucks. Definitely one of my favorite training tools because it's just so useful to keep yourself shifting your weight around in the off season. Not to mention this is a whole lot of fun. So this one may come as a surprise, but the Wii Balance Board is absolutely freaking awesome. As far as the simulated edge control, I was very impressed with it. It's not just used for the yoga games and crap. Now, out of all of the games that I've played, granted there only was one that didn't totally suck. And if I'm correct, I think it's the second Sean White game. Although it could be the first one, not sure. Pretty sure it's the second one because the first one didn't play anywhere nearly as good and the edge simulation is considerably better on this than any of the other games that I've played. Like I said, I was very impressed. I have $20 into the board, another 20 bucks in the system that I got at a yard sale, and the game only cost me a dollar or two. So for under 50 bucks, I got it a great at-home living room simulator. My only gripe is the feet are sensitive, so if you put it on the carpet, it's not going to be anywhere nearly as accurate as it would be on a hardwood floor or linoleum or any kind of smooth surface. I'd like to thank you guys for spending the past couple minutes with me. As you can see, this is just a little floors lava balance drill I came up with. Honestly, your imagination's your only limit, and the most important thing you can do is get out there and keep yourself active in the off season. And live life, enjoy it a little bit. But comment below if there's anything that I missed, or stuff that you did with your summers to keep yourself on your game. And I hope this video was useful in teaching you guys some off-season training tricks that you can add to your own quiver. Please subscribe and remember, just board through the pain.